Aloha, namaste. This is Radha, and I'm here talking about our solar eclipse that is coming this Wednesday morning here. Um, Hawaii time, it's going to be the full span of the eclipse will be from 5.42 a.m. to 11.47 a.m., um, but it'll only be visible for a little window in there from 6.11 to 7.56 a.m. And the total eclipse itself will actually only be visible in Argentina and Chile. So we'll just be seeing a partial eclipse here and most other locations as well. But this eclipse is very powerful. We can all feel it already. As I said in my last video I did on these transits with Mercury and the sun um, running into K2 this, this weekend, this past weekend, we've really been feeling the power that's been zapped from us in many ways. K2 has this quality of really being almost like a, a pit. You know, there's this internal deep down that we go with the South Node, and it's really dredging up old things for us, old stories. Um, it really depends on what area of your life the stories are gonna surround, but ancestral wounds and things related to your parents, this is one of those times where the stuff we don't want to look at is, is rising to the surface. And as much as we've ignored it is as much as it is painful to look at. The more we process things on a regular basis, the more it's less to deal with, right? So each of us is going through this in our own way. I know people are dealing with health problems. People are dealing with geological problems, you know, where they're living, being underwater and storms and all kinds of things that people are reckoning with in their environment around them. Um, and we each have our own relationship stories and things that we're reckoning with in that way. So first of all, I just want to offer compassion because this has been a really challenging time, you know, for, for many people. And in some ways, the actual eclipse itself is kind of like this reset button where we get to choose new stories going forward. We get to decide that there's a different way we're going to move forward. And again, the more we're willing to look at the things we don't want to look at, the easier it is to, to write something new for ourselves. If we continue to stay stuck and we refuse to allow things to come to the surface, then we just keep repeating the same patterns. It's not really a punishment. It's just the way that life is. It's a natural law of the universe that what you ignore is going to continue to persist because you're not dealing with it. And so this is really the theme right now. Whatever you haven't been dealing with, here it is, you know, and you can face it or you cannot face it. But one way or another, it's going to pop its way to the surface. And K2 has a particularly painful way of doing that. There tends to be a feeling like something's coming out of the blue, this sort of erratic energy of like, oh, where's that coming from? And it's really, again, that place we haven't been paying attention. Because the sun is the thing being eclipsed here, that's our source of power. And we each source our power from a different place. So we might be feeling like our actual energy levels are low. We might be feeling like, wow, I'm not, I'm more tired than usual. You know, I don't have the, the kind of enthusiasm for life that I often do. And this can come out in that way. But it also shows us the ways in which our power struggles in the world, where we view power as something that is either exerted on us or that we exert on others. This kind of reality we live in where some people have more power than others. This is going to really come up as a theme for us right now, particularly in Virgo, where the power is is like in our ability to pay attention to the minutia, to like look at the details and organize them and make everything perfect. And the more we try to control our lives, because that's really what we're doing when we're trying to make everything perfect. You know, we're, we're trying to keep ourselves from having bad experiences, whether it's around your health and you're trying to take care of all the details of your health. And then you're like, why am I still having illness or discomfort? whether it's in your relations with other people, you're trying to make sure all the, you know, all the communications are perfect and everything's right. And yet still you have conflict, still there's disagreement, still you feel unheard um, or whether it's, you know, financial or otherwise the Virgo is the natural sixth house. So this is where we're reckoning with these things, debts, illness, and energy problems with people, discord, you know, and arguments. And so we have to really look at how much control we actually have, which is 
not a lot, right? We do need to pay attention to the details. We have to look at the things that we're not, that we're not dealing with, but we also have to have a place where we kind of surrender it and say, you know, I don't know what the result of this is going to be. I can take the best care of my health as I know how, and I can listen to all the different advice coming at me. But at the end of the day, I can only control so much from the outside. And truly our power is sourced from the inside, right? The more we can connect to source itself, the more we feel empowered and we walk through life in that way and naturally magnetize things that are good for us and naturally walk through doors that are already open. We just before perceived them as being closed, perhaps. We have more of a flow in the way that we access everything around us when we're in touch with our internal, natural inborn power that we all have. We all have it. And it might feel to some of us that we have less power than others and that other people walk in their power more. But some people are better at possessing their power or exerting their power or in a group situation, they might be the one who stands up and acts out of a place of power. But that's not necessarily true power. True power is, again, just that capacity to know what is true for you and to be able to really connect that to what's the highest truth, the truth that's true for everyone and walk that path and, and walk carrying that within you. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, and I think I've finally taken care of a detail that I have not taken care of before, which is figured out how to share my screen without obliterating myself to a tiny little box. Um, so hopefully my chart is to the right here and, or maybe it's to the left. I don't know, but we have here Mercury K2 and the sun in this star called Hasta, and they've been here in this weekend. So I did talk about the star a little bit in that last video. This is a star that is represented by an open hand. It's the star Corvus, which is like five fingers of a hand. And that open hand really shows us what we can release and let go of and what we can bring in and manifest. It's often referred to as a manifestation star. This is ruled by Savitor, who's that early sunlight on the horizon, the first rays of sun that we see at dawn. And we can really see how those beginnings of anything we're trying to put into motion can be sort of the make or break of what's going to happen <laughs> because we either are all in and put our energy into something and make it happen right away because we feel it from the inside out, or we're kind of half it, half in, half out. We're not really fully sure we want to do something. And that energy is, can be felt from all around us. So the things we don't manifest in our life are often things that we don't really want that much. You know, when we look at like people say, if you, if you, you know, want to see what you really care about or what you really want, look at your life. You know, the places you've put your energy indicate where your, where your life has gone, you know? And of course there's tragedies and things that come our way that throw us off course, but the overriding things we have, you know, whatever career you have, whatever relationships you have, whatever home you have, wherever you live, the community that you have around you, you've cultivated that you've created that. And that's what manifestation is. You know, it's not just sitting there and kind of praying, like, give me this thing. You know, it's, it's putting effort towards something that you truly want. And a lot of times we let our fears, our inhibitions, our old stories, and our projections on other people kind of determine which way we go. Or we live in such a state where we're constantly relating to what other people want from us. And so we have trouble standing in that power and really making what we want a reality. So this is a time to check in with that. And this is a time when we can really heal old wounds around giving away our energy to others or spending so much time on the details that we actually kind of eventually forget what it is we were even doing. Like sometimes we get so mired in the small details of something, we end up on another thing and then another thing and another thing. Before we know it, we've lost sight of that bigger vision or that bigger picture we had. And we're, we're just being taken from one place to the next. And so the more we can really tune in, in this portal and access what, what is it we want? What is it we're trying to bring forth? 
and allow this to be a reset on the ways in which we do get caught up on minutia that doesn't matter or the ways in which we allow ourselves to be led by others or by the world around us or by our projections, our subconscious fears. And we don't, we don't really get what we want. Um, I don't know why this is on the 29th here. Let's see. I must've changed the time for some reason. <laughs> um, Cause the moon should be here too. So let me get them, get us to the second and this is not the exact time where the sun and the moon are across from each other. It's a little bit earlier in the day. So eight, I think it's like 849 or 848. Yeah. Where we have the sun and the moon in their new moon, their cycle that they start off every year. And this year's new moon is also the opening portal of Navaratri, the nine nights of the goddess mother of Durga. And we see this comes on the tail end of Pitru Paksha, which I spoke about in my last video, this, this two weeks of paying homage to the ancestors. And so all of those old things that are coming up, and, and really this is, you know, this is a coincidence, if you will, that Pitru Paksha happens to correlate with this south node eclipse because the south node also brings up old stuff and old stories and so we're we're really reckoning with the past in in multitudes of ways in this moment and the ancestral element comes in from pitru paksha and kt really brings up like our own past lives and our own early childhood and the stuff we have to deal with ourselves from our life so both and are happening right now and um i'm going to talk about Navratri in a moment, but I, I want to actually also reflect upon the fact that Mars is giving his drishti here and Jupiter is also giving his drishti here. So some of the arguments we've been having or the places where we think we are definitely right and we have no room for the other person's perspective, this is also coming to light in this time. We might feel very self-righteous like this, you know, this is my opinion, it's black or white and I'm right. And some of that is going to have to come out as well, because the places where we feel very right are often also wounds. The, the rightness that we think we are experiencing is coming from information we have, and the information we have might be different from information someone else has. We also have to recognize that everyone has their own agenda in life. Everyone's coming forward with their own path and trying to just meet their needs and their desires. And sometimes those things come in conflict with one another. So the more we can discuss and, and see everyone's side of things, maybe more than one person can win in a situation. And maybe not. Maybe somebody has to compromise a little more this time around. But the more we can have awareness around that, the more we can work towards things being really right or more fair. Jupiter's reflection is giving us hope and optimism, but he's in the star of Mergashira, which is the searching star. It's the star that wants to kind of leave our old family values and leave the way that we've done things before, the stuff that we thought gave us security and find new horizons and new places. So we're starting to kind of get itchy here. And Jupiter's also moving towards his retrograde cycle. So we're starting to feel that energy of like slowing down at the same time as where can I go? Where can I go? And this Again, we can't go anywhere until we deal with what we've already had, what, what's already come up for us, what we've already been through. If we just keep stuffing things down, then anywhere new we go, we're carrying that baggage with us internally. And so the more we can clear along the way, the more our sights are clear, where we're going, our intuition becomes clear, our discernment becomes clear. And we have that capacity for very strong discernment because Mercury is in his own sign here. This is where Mercury is exalted. He's the only planet that's exalted in his own sign. And he um, really offers us high levels of discernment, particularly in Hasta. We have this power of perception, this power of being able to see through all the details and have clarity and make sense of something, organize something in sort of a quick manner where everything comes together and we can see the picture of what we're trying to create. And the next star of Chitra is where we really start to build it. And so we can see this 
this is a time with a lot of promise, actually. It's just, we've been in the most painful section of, of what we're going through. And the eclipse moving forward is an opportunity to really take a hold of the new beginnings that we want to create and the new stories we want to create and bring with us that hope and bring with us the blessings of our ancestors and the blessings of our past learning experiences, because that's what all of this is. Everything we've been through is a learning experience. We're not here to perfect anything. We're here to really learn on our feet. And it feels like we're doing it wrong or we're failing or we're falling, but that's all part of this. That's what this is. We're not here to, you know, have executed something in perfect fashion. If we were, then what would we even be doing here? What would be the point, you know? Um, so as we move into Navratri, one of the things I really like to sit with is the story of Dorga, because Dorga came from her realm, her loka, to save everybody because she's called. She's called upon. They say, please, mother goddess, come help us. Come in a form that can help us because she's many fold, right? The, the Shakti energy that is Ma is comes in many different manifestations. And she comes down in this fierce warrior form, riding her lion and a tiger in some realms. And she is here to help us fight the demons that are within ourselves, our own ego that shape shifts just like Mahisha Sora, the shape-shifting demon that she's fighting. She is showing us the path to conquering all the things that keep showing up like, oh, you know, if we're focused on our external world, we think that person's the problem, that situation's the problem, that boss was the problem, that relationship was the problem, the stone in front of me is the problem. My son, like he, he hits himself on inanimate objects because he's very active. And then he yells at the inanimate object, you know, it's like that table, that table is so bad. And I, you know, it's funny in a sense, but it's, it's what we're all doing in our own way. Not maybe quite as obviously, but we're blaming all these external circumstances without reckoning with how we're creating them. And so Dorga is here to help us reckon with how we're creating them, you know, and find those demons within ourselves. And I love the fact that she must be called upon. We need to ask for her help. There's really nothing harder than asking for help. And particularly in the sign of Virgo, we tend to be like really hard on ourselves about anything we need help with or anything that's not already perfect. We want to hide the, the fact that there's anything imperfect about us. And so our, our path here is to really admit all of the messy things about ourselves, show our mess, invite the cleaner over, you know, invite all your friends to witness you and your messiness and really start to clean it up in a, in a real way where it's not just kind of stuffed in the closet and you open one closet and you're like, whoa, okay, that's the crazy closet, you know, where you really have all areas of your life so integrated and so clear and clean that you're operating at your full capacity. Because when we have these places stuffed in the corners of our actual physical realm, as well as ourselves, our psyche, our mind and our emotions, we really end up doing ourselves a disservice. It's like we're handicapped as we're walking through every situation, we're holding all this extra baggage and we're not really aware of it. And so this is a time to really clear out all the channels and allow ourselves to let them come up in all the different forms they come up. And Dorga needs help, right? Dorga manifests in all of her forms of Shakti. Out of her come the Nava Dorga, the nine Dorgas, the Ashtamatrikas, the eight little mothers, you know, the Dasmaha Vidyas, the 10 wisdom goddesses, all of these forms of Shakti have to come out to help her. Kali has to come out to really deal with it because there's one demon that just keeps dropping blood. And every time he drops blood, another demon springs forward. And it's like, what are we going to do now? We need the, we need the most ferocious form of Durga to come out. And when all is said and done and the battlefields, you know, strewn with, with various, array of demon bodies and Shakti has all come back into herself. All of her power has come back into herself. She sits on her lion and everyone's cheering and yay, you know, Jema, Jema. And she looks at them and says, you know, anytime you need my help, I'm here. You just need to call. You just need to ask my, ask for my help. 
And then she sucks the demon. She sucks Mahishasura back into her body because he is also a part of her. All that we would like to judge outside of ourselves as evil, as demonic, as monstrous, and all that we would like to judge within ourselves that way is a part of her and her grace as well. And she, if you understand this sort of, you know, tantric view and, and Vedic view of life, she is the manifest reality. Right? Shiva is our consciousness and our connection to source comes when we sit and meditate perhaps. But every day we live in this world and we interact and we engage in these bodies. And that is Shakti. That is the feminine energy. And she she needs to be called into reality because that's what she is. She's she's the manifestation of all the things. We wouldn't see ourselves otherwise. We wouldn't actually be here playing out this play. And so we have this opportunity for nine nights to, to light a candle on our altars and sit with this energy. And the nights are broken up into three sections. There's the first three nights where we really do release and destroy and get rid of all the demons within ourselves through this energy of Kali. We allow ourselves to come face to face with the darkness. And then for three nights, we bring in this really nourishing energy of Lakshmi and allow ourselves to, to feel that rejuvenation, that life force energy, that energy that really sustains everything that we make. And then we bring in Saraswati and really allow ourselves to be like new, you know, like what can I create? What's new? What can I make out of this, um, you know, stuff that is life. And there's each night also has a correlation with the Nava Durga, with one of the nine Durgas. And so you can, you know, dive in deep to the study. If you really want to know the, the details and all the information and so much powerful, powerful Shakti and teachings and prayers and ritual, you can um, check in with one of my favorite teachers, Lara Amazone. She does a ritual every Navaratri. And it's really beautiful because you just learn so much about the goddess, not just in the form of Durga, but in all her many forms. And you really get taken on this trip through the temples in Nepal that she's visited. She shows you all these different mortis and statues and things, and it's really beautiful. Um, you can, at home, really sit with what you're releasing, what you're nourishing, what you're calling in, what you want to create, what you want to bring into your world. I've had the most powerful experiences with this nine-night celebration, um, and it's in the spring, and it's in the fall, and the fall celebration is really the the most powerful. It's a it's a celebration that comes at this time right after the equinox, when in many places, you know, in the northern hemisphere where India is, there's a releasing that's happening right now. Right, we're moving into that winter time, and so there's the harvest of everything we've cultivated in the spring and everything we've really you know had grow throughout the summer. And then there's this time of letting go as well. Um, for my part, if you are interested in really tuning into your true North, your, your guiding light of like, what am I doing here? Because no matter what life throws at you, if you know what you're really doing here and why you can always come back to that and recognize that the outer circumstances will change no matter what, but you are here guiding your own ship always. And when you feel connected to what that purpose is, separate from outside identities of work or relationships or, or whatever else that might be, then I, I feel you're really, you're really able to handle and navigate anything. So I'm doing, if you're on the big island, I'm doing an in-person workshop this coming Saturday, um, where we're really going to dive deep into this concept of who am I and what am I doing here and your life path? And then I'm going to cultivate an online version for those of you who are not on the big island soon, coming soon. Um, but I also offer life path readings and you're welcome to go to my website at radahomeastrology.com and look into that. I have a quiz you can take if you want to just have a little fun and see where you're at with your own connection to your path. And um, if you're interested in diving deep into an exploration with me on that or any other subject, you can find me there. And I also have a Patreon group where I offer weekly forecasts for all the different signs. And I just posted the one for the eclipse for each of the signs, because this is a deep dive for each of us that's very unique. It's not the same if you have a Pisces rising as if you have a Cancer rising. You know, it's not the same for Aries as it is for Sagittarius. Each of the people have a different path 
of what they're processing right now, what's up for them. And so I make these unique forecasts for each of the signs weekly. And this week I dove really deep for the eclipse. Blessings on your Navratri, on your new moon, on this eclipse portal. May all the compassion that you have for anyone else come back to yourself as well and, and vice versa. You know, the compassion you have for yourself, may you show it to others. Namaste.